Aliens, ghosts, the supernatural, conspiracies, a cup of coffee? Welcome to Caffeinated Conspiracies. I'm your host, Glenn. And I'm your host, Omer. We look at the eye-opening, the crazy, the unexplained. Do we give you answers? No. But do we shed some light on the weird and wonderful? Also, no. But we do look at different theories, plausible solutions, and even come up with our own. We aren't experts, ufologists, or scientists, but we are open-minded individuals and have an interest in the unknown. So put us in your pocket, grab a coffee, and let's dive into this week's episode. The Giza Pyramids, built last centuries. Relics of an old kingdom and estimated to be over 4,500 years old. But the big question is, who built them? Was it man? Was it God? Or was it aliens? Let's take a look. So yes, welcome to this week's episode. Oh man, man, the, the pyramids. I mean, let, let's let say, I mean, I've had a fascination with Egypt and the pyramids, the Sphinx, all that for years. And doing the research and looking at documentaries just for this episode in particular has just, I don't know, sort of reignited that passion that... I could go to Egypt, I could go through these tombs and I could solve the mystery. You know, I've done it on Assassin's Creed, why can't I do it in real life? But, I mean, that's why we're here to make these episodes, because we can't do that. We like to discuss all the fun, interesting bits of information that are out there and try and discover what we think is true or false or whatever we believe. So, first off, oh man, man where, where, where'd your research take you? Ah, oh, like, I wish we'd have done, like, the Egyptian gods or something. I find them more fun. <laughs> hey, my that, theory... That, that, could, that could come in season two, you never know. My theory on all these, like, different gods from around the world, we do need to do them, at, uh, like, each of them at some time. But, yeah, like, that, it's like, it's just old school comic books. All our comic books are basically, you know, <laughs> modern day gods, right? Yeah. Spider- yeah. Spider-Man was your Loki at the time. <laughs> yeah, there you go, see? So your, your research took you down the gods route, did it? <laughs> I, I quickly turned away from that. But, like, <laughs> the pyramids have a lot of... Because the Egyptians wrote a lot of stuff down. They did it in picture form. They, they were emoji people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all hieroglyphs. But it was all on, like, papyrus, and some of it lived. So there's a lot of actual documentation of what happened there. There's a lot missing, which leaves a lot of gaps. But there's a lot of information there. And then there's the British and the the Europeans who decided to vandalise it all in the 1970s. Uh, But yeah, so we stole a lot of pieces from there. Um, But it has some, like, besides the facts, it has some weird, strange theories that were just fun to look into. But, like, you sat there and, like, is it true, though? This, This says it's not. That's the thing. That's the thing. And, I mean, just starting off, I mean, we already know and probably your research is taking you down the same route, that it's extremely difficult to explain how the pyramids were built. So the most likely answer has got to be aliens. Therefore, good night. See you next week. <laughs> I didn't call but, aliens first time. <laughs> <laughs> jo- but no, jo- jo- joking aside, the, the construction of the pyramids um, has been very controversial and has spawned many odd, quirky theories out there. And some of them are, like, completely balls-to-the-wall ideas. Um, I mean, let's look at not just... I mean, this episode is primarily on the Pyramids of Giza. Let's just put it out there. But the more you look into it, there are pyramids everywhere. They are built all over the world. I, I... I do want to explore that side of stuff. I didn't research it for this one. That, that is an interesting topic. Yeah. But the pyramids in Egypt, compared to the ones found around the world, even though similar sort of base structure, yeah. the outline of the pyramids of Giza, like the outer shells that, we pick, that have been picked apart through the many thousands of years, mm-hmm. is the most interesting thing. Because they were the only ones out of all of them that we know that had a golden capstone... And then perfectly smooth. laid limestone down the smooth. outside. Yeah, there was smooth. Yeah. I mean, we could still I was see just evidence. like, I'm upset all that got removed because now we've missed my opportunity to slide down that. 
Well, that's the thing. A lot of it was... Uh, I was watching a documentary, and it was shown that some of that was down to earthquakes in the area uh, in, like, 16, 1700s, uh, maybe even earlier than that. And that's what sort of crumpled away the, the limestone that, that was sort of, like, making it that smooth. And this is still seen by the evidence. If you look at the top of the uh, the Great Pyramid, you can still see some of the limestone on the top where it's, it's still smooth at the top. And even at the base as well, there's still a bit there, but I believe that has been remanufactured and remade. It's not the original pieces. Yeah, some of it um, was re-added for tourist attractions. Yeah, which is a shame. Say, hey, really. this is what you missed out on. And then, like, I think some of it through the years got stolen and reused. Yeah. Some of it just eroded because it's limestone. It really wasn't going to last anyway. Uh, so it just eroded away. I think the pyramids lost, like... I think it was like uh, eighty meters off their height. I was going to say, yeah, they've, they've shrunk. They've yeah. shrunk since they were first built, which is one of the things that I found really interesting is that they, they've shrunk. I was like, hang on a minute, they're not people. How did they shrink? <laughs> but then take into consideration, obviously, all that that was piled on top of it, sandstone, and the ground limestone, that it's on as well. Sand. <laughs> it's not just that. And I'm sorry if this episode is sort of like flickering all over the show. This is sort of one thing will get mentioned and we've got to pick up on it straight away. Because if we try and come back to it, it won't make sense. So do bear with us. There is some sort of plot. Um, Yes, we have a plot this episode. (laughs) Um, So where you said there, like it's in the desert and things like it's on sand. The way that we get to see it in any pictures or in films it's smack bang in the middle of a, a dry desert, but it's not. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's really not in the middle of nowhere. It is for everyone to see perfectly fine. I came across a picture online as I was like getting pictures of the Pyramid of Giza. And apparently in Giza, there is a pizza hut that has a window that faces the biggest of the pyramids. <laughs> Some That's dude took awesome. a picture. <laughs> And you can see, like, I thought it was Photoshop. I stared at this picture for, like, five minutes straight. <laughs> thought he'd Photoshopped the Pizza Hut logo next to it. Then realised it's a mirror reflection because it's on the window. <laughs> you are going to have to send me the picture of that so I can put that on our Instagram because that is brilliant. That is brilliant. So, I mean, for me, I have been fascinated by the pyramids. It has always intrigued me and it's the fact that growing up we were always told that they were built by slaves and then as years have gone on and gone on then we were told that the people that built it weren't slaves they were actually paid workers who willingly were there to build the pyramids and then i started sort of getting older and i started jumping on and watching my own tv shows and sort of learning things for myself and then i started to watch shows like ancient aliens which is a big sort of thing that's driven me to do this show um and from that, it was like they were built as sort of energy storing devices. They were built for this. And we had people come from outer space to teach us how to build these things. Not specifically saying aliens built them. Ancient astronauts came to Earth to show us, gave us the technology to build these devices. And I've also been listening. And uh, I never thought I'd be one of those people that would do this. And I have to say, it's been really interesting. I've jumped onto the Joe Rogan podcast and listened into where he spoke with other people that have been to the pyramids and their stories and what their ideas are. Um, one of the uh, guys that I had on there, I've completely forgot his name. Uh, Graham, I'm going to have to look his name up and I do apologize that we'll sort of redub it a bit here somewhere. Um He's like a pseudoscientist and he's been discredited for saying certain things like, you know, there was no way that these people could have built the pyramids trying to say that his words have been taken out of context. And people are saying that he's saying that people from Middle Eastern countries were thick and that they couldn't build these things. It was simply impossible. They weren't intelligent enough. Yet none of us have questioned, oh, the white man built this. You know, that, I don't think that's what he's saying. He's saying at the time that they were built, I mean, it's quite hard to understand how they did it. There is only so much manpower in the world to make... Nobody, and I mean nobody on God's green earth, could make me join in with a bunch of sweaty men and pull boulders and rocks up ramps made of wood with rope. I don't care what century it is, I point blank refuse. 
even if you're paying me. I don't care. I ain't doing it. I mean, that's a different like argument of like if you would do it. <laughs> but yeah, simply no. And I get, and I get the comment of the intelligence level because you're talking the pyramids were majority of them were built what twenty six thousand BC. So you're talking like. Four, Sorry, the 5, name was Graham ago. Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. I've got a few of his books. Uh, do apologise for interrupting you there, old man. Uh, but right. Graham Hancock for those that uh, are interested. Not 26,000, 2600 BC. So you're talking like 5,000, just just shy of like four and a half thousand years ago. And from like what we have as recorded from like, like, you know, zero, like birth of Jesus, mm. like even then they didn't have technologies as sophisticated as enough as they assume you require to build the pyramids. And you're talking two. 2,600 years earlier they're building this shit. Yeah. So it's like, I get where he's coming from in an intelligence level on that point, but if you go far back enough, there were great thinkers who had some of the great ideas that we're now saying belong to somebody else who thought the same thing. They just didn't have the wealth or technology to prove it. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, that it's still the whatever they use to build them or even carry the, the rocks, the the boulders that were used, like the slabs of pretty much granite, which was shipped from like, what, 900 kilometers away in a quarry up to the great, up to Giza and to be built there and to be mined and chiseled in that area and then brought up. It's like, how, how is that possible in that day and age? Even now it is not an easy feat. It's, I'm in a lorry. It's a crane to pick it up out of where it is, to put it on the lorry, to strap the lorry, two, three guys to strap it in, to drive it up to where it's got to go, to have another crane pick it up, put it where it needs to be, and that's just an ordinary rock. We're talking granite. Granite isn't light, let's face it. You know, And we're, we're made to believe that these people chiseled it 900 kilometers away, loaded it onto boats, sailed it down the Nile, or up the Nile, whichever way it was going, to Giza, and then put it inside the pyramids. And even not just, we're not just talking the outside, we're talking the inside where the rooms were... I mean, I'm a big guy, there's no way I can get through some of them sort of crevices that they've built where they've put this massive granite and these stones that are just so high up to build these chambers. And I'm thinking, it's it, as me, as a... The, my, the way my mind works, just something isn't quite adding up. And the design of the pyramid, I know, obviously, over time, and this still is to, the, to this day, and it will have been back then, we build something, didn't work, we try again, and we try again, and we try again, until we get it perfect. The Egyptians did that. The pyramids were built. They had, they had so many different pyramids. Obviously, I know we're mainly focused on the pyramids of Giza. It's like a hundred out of them, yeah. Exactly. And they've obviously made some really dull not very interesting pyramids and over time they've just gone let's do it better it's sort of like when you were at school or college if you were to do this project again how would you improve i'd, I'd build it bigger <laughs> you know? that's, that's what i'd do and that's exactly what they did over time they just kept building and building and building until they got it right and i mean like i said before we, we we've always been told to believe that Slaves built the pyramids. That's what that I mean. That's yeah. That's what I've always to do believed. with sort of the religious aspect of it because of Moses, which sort and... of now sort of bums on the idea of our previous episode when we talked about the Ark of the Covenant and the them escaping but this, Egypt. This was it. The, the escape of Egypt was the last. So Ramses' pyramid was the yeah. last one to be built. Um. What annoyed me reading some of the research is they kept calling them Jews, and I was like, they weren't Jews, they were Israelites, because yeah. Judaism didn't exist yet. <laughs> yeah. But, like, but it was only Ramses that I could find any evidence who used slaves. Everyone before that point used workers, and you can see, like, logs of how they were paid in, like, dates and sheep and cows just for food and lodging 
And like yeah. there was a hierarchy because somebody was getting paid more than others. Yeah. Just the manager who sat at the back like, do you mind pulling that a little harder? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this, another great thing is about the pyramids as well. And I don't know if this has fascinated you, but it is technically the only living, well, live, well, the only still standing uh, seventh wonder of the world, of uh, the original seven wonders of the world. Because when you think, uh, so the original seven wonders of the world, I do have them here. So here we go. So the original seven wonders of the world were the Colossus of Rhodes, the Great Pyramids of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Temple of Artemis. The Mausoleum of Halicarnassus and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. I apologise for the butchering of the word Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. And you still said it wrong. I don't know. I don't know how it sounds I, like. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, th- don't get me wrong, you know. There's still, and we will go into this in a later episode, that the seven wonders of the world were half of them even real. Because we don't know. And, I mean, the pyramids have fascinated a lot of people. And looking at the, the theories of them saying that they built ramps and dragged the stone up the ramps and placed it where it needed to be, one of those, just the block itself, would take quite a lot of people to move. It's it's tens of thousands of man hours to build these pyramids, and they're saying that they were built in a twenty year period. Nah, mm. not having it. Not I think the it. time frames off personally, but like the blocks that were used, and it was tested if it could be pulled by the amount of people they were guessing. Because what was it like? The biggest cube took 146 men to pull right but you're talking teams of like 10,000 men pulling these in unison so like each one was pulling them like consistently like there was a team pulling a block so like 146 or seven men isn't that that insane when they were pulling them with sort of on so like it's like So what my research found is like the biggest and best theory was they got them from the Nile. So the blocks came on the Nile. They built temporary canals that got them off the Nile and onto land. Yep. As far in as they could without, you know, lack. Then they used wooden planks with upturned edges, like sleds basically, to drag them. And they had a team of people that would just wet the floor so it slid along more smoother. Which, okay. with all that in place, you're talking teams of 200 men who you got a team that's sort of making sure it's going in the right direction, people wetting the floor, probably swapping around with each other. So it's not one set of 147 men consistently pulling for, like, miles. It's a rotating team, which doesn't make it sound that impossible. But don't you think, and... Please do, if anybody listening, don't think I'm taking offence, uh, you know, saying anything bad about people uh, back in that period of time or even in the Middle East at that time. Um, but don't think that's a lot of organisation for people that are literally using hammer and chisel because that is a lot of organisation skills. That's like today's level of organisation organization skills to get people working. I mean, it's it's a lot. That is a lot for the time it was in. I mean... It's not. Because, like, even the political structures back then and how the hierarchy of the, you know, the Egyptian hierarchy worked showed they had that level of organisation. It's not like getting a rotating team so everyone's using an equal amount of stamina to pull this brock is gonna is a new idea we didn't come up with this in the last like 100 years or something oh no i'm not this saying is, we have i'm just saying this it's, is you know this is just things that have been practiced that humans will do when left in a group and become structured we've just started recording it later in our history doesn't mean it didn't happen before my question did they unionize <laughs> I mean, was there some sort of union involved? Did they have workers' rights? Was there sick pay? Was there paid compensation? What? (laughs) I mean, what? What was it? One of the things that I read, and it was from 
oh, I actually have the source written somewhere if anyone wants it. But they did find bones of the workers that had been healed properly. So, you know, when you break a bone and you don't set it properly, you can see that yeah. the bone deforms. But all the bones that had been broken had been healed correctly. So they were fully working limbs again, which yeah. means they had a healthcare plan. <laughs> now let's sort of shift ever so slightly back to the obscure and sort of looking at things so we're saying that the building these men are dragging oh, let's say they are doing let's say they've built a seven mile ramp which it would take just to get to the top of the pyramid to drag these boulders up and that's no, what no, you, mi you missed what i said right they were wet in the floor they had a sled it was basically a slip and slide <laughs> Yeah, going down. <laughs> Not going up. Um, hey, we're going into the bonkers now. They did. They knew yeah. how to defy gravity and just right, slip and right, slide right. uphill. That's where we'll get into that in a minute. But going into that, let's just sort of look at as well that the points of the pyramids line up perfectly with the stars. Point perfect north and... If you run a line against all like the weird and wonderful sort of structures around the world, they all line up together. I disagree with that because, yes, they do if you ignore the ones on the outskirts. Well, yeah, yes, but a lot of Because you're them... saying, yeah, they line up, but they don't line up if you add all of them in. It's like an insane wave up and down. Because there's, like, pyramids or pyramid-like structures off the coast of Japan. They don't fit that line. No. We still... I mean, that is looking at as... We're looking at these particular ones. How is it that they're Yeah, aligned? if you pick and choose could that anything. Be, could, yeah, could that be a coincidence? No. Is that like, what you're, are you saying it's coincidence that they all line up? Or do you think somewhere... Someone no, because they line has up because... strategically planned this. No, I don't think anyone's because they perfectly line up in the most habitable areas of the world. It's like no one's going to be on the North Pole, Antarctica, trying to build a pyramid. Hey, you never know. We you saw Alien versus Predator, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we don't know what's but under the that only, ice. Yeah, the only thing they have in common, common is habitable areas within those centuries. Like, yes, okay. now, like, over time, we've been able to develop technology or get used to a, by a bigger, higher climates or lower climates, but it's all where we habitated, like, humans around the world. It's like, you're just talking about, it's why is the Earth the only one with, like, human life, only planet with human life on it? Because it's the only habitable planet in our solar system. Yeah. Now... Again, looking at some of the, the weird and wonderful and everything I sort of say, you seem to have an answer for. So let's go through this. The weird and so wonderful. The, um, the inner sanctum of the pyramid and you've got the, the big tomb at the top, which has got three pillar, uh, I think it's five pillars of granite piled on top and it's in like a, a double squared room. Okay. How does that, the, the, the measurements of everything right equate to the golden rule and the rules of pi when that type of mathematics wasn't practiced we didn't know about it we hadn't discovered it we hadn't put these into place but that's just assuming like that we didn't know that math existed but we knew the what so the golden ratio yeah has been proven throughout the world as like, it's in nature. And if you notice how the pyramids were built in line with the stars, and lining up things with the stars wasn't new to Egyptians. It was known before them. Yeah. I mean... Um, so when you going, know they know that, well. you're going yeah. off nature, so you're using the stars to measure where you're going to plot them down first. Yeah. Then using the golden ratio isn't out of the realm of, you know, knowledge. It's like they don't know it's the golden ratio they're doing, but they did it. Yeah, because you see it in the world around you. Um, pi is just a circle. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a perfect was... circle. You're not you're not saying hey they figured out pi by the perfect you know ten thousandth decimal because that's what we're yeah. still trying to figure out. Well, I don't yeah. even know how many decimals pi goes up to now. 
they just used a circle. A perfect circle is what you're saying. Which Yeah, so they I mean they the the, the mathematics of it and the architecture and the design and the structure is fantastic, don't get me wrong, and I think it is absolutely phenomenal that these pyramids are still standing now. They've stood the test of time. We have buildings that we've built in our time that still aren't standing anymore. Um, and, you know, and that's not just through natural causes. I mean, these have survived natural causes. They've survived sort of being battered by storms and sand and erosion and people climbing on them and wars. And they've just... I mean, it, it's mind-boggling that they're still standing to this day. And that's the, that's one of the things I can't get over, is the fact that they're still there. I got two answers to that one. Okay. One go, go is ahead. the pyramids were genuinely built to last, because they were initially, like, from what I found, is they were built to house the pharaohs so their body was still there if they ever came back to life. Right? So you wanted them to last. And pharaohs, like vast amount of resources you know you've got enough gold to just plot it on the top of a building so yeah they could pay for it and the, the pyramids that are standing as we said you know the pyramids of giza eroded they shrunk right yeah. they built them so big and so well structured that they're not gonna collapse by an accident whereas buildings made today and this is like the second answer like we don't in today's world, what is really built to last? Yeah, true. That's very like, true. You're talking today, the richest men aren't trying to, you know, solidify a building to say they're going to live in there for eternity. They're like raising a building, so that, but they know it's going to get knocked down so they can build another building and charge you again for it. It's all economy. You just, everything, nothing today is built to last. No, I agree. I agree. Um, before we do carry on, we are going to take a very quick break. Okay, so we're back, and I know I've been sort of disproving some of the crazy theories, but I got I found a few fun, few fun ones that I okay, I don't agree with, but I think they were like interesting things to talk about. The okay. main one, like everyone keeps coming across aliens. And consistently, aliens, like, everyone's... Aliens, not to be confused with Asian astronauts, the two separate things here. Yeah. Which I will go into. Ancient astronauts were, like, precursors to us, weren't they? I think. Yeah. Um, whereas aliens are a completely different different species. Um, and we are, like, the aliens one is the one that I... And it, I really like the idea that it was just a ship that landed and ran out of fuel. <laughs> that one came I up like more than that. anything. It's brilliant. It was. I genuinely like that. I was like shocked how often that came up when I was looking at it. Like every time I found it, oh, aliens built it. Aliens gave us the technology. The reason we could get the pillar, the the, the granite stones up, is because they had hover technology, so it didn't actually had no friction to get up. But. The reason they needed to do this is they came, they landed, ran out of fuel, couldn't get off the planet. And we mummified them and told everybody they were pharaohs. I like it. Hence the fact the dog heads and stuff like that. Yeah. So this is this is like this is where the, the, the gods aspect came into it. So I like that yeah. one. I, I I like the idea of it. I just couldn't find well, you, it's one of these you can't find the proof of it yeah but it's still it's like full proof anyway given the facts you're given and then given that as an answer you can start building your own theory of how that could work there yeah. are some holes in it i do agree but i thought it was a fantastic idea of just like you know like that. we've just run out of fuel here's a planet we can land on they're not there very intelligent let's go here <laughs> <laughs> We could convince a couple of thousand of them to bring us some stones from miles away. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, going on to that theory, just quickly. I mean, there is lots of the pyramids that haven't been explored. There are tombs and, you know, I mean, only at the time of recording, I believe I was looking at the news the other day, that they found a new corridor. And it's one that hadn't has never been uh, excavated before or explored. And um, with... Um, what is it, light R rate te technology now, is they can map quite a lot of things, and they've found even more stuff. So, I mean, Wasn't keep there. it here to find out what's going on. 
yeah, I'm sure. I don't know if it was recent, and I didn't keep a note of it, so I'm an idiot. But <laughs> there was a tunnel. You heard found... it here first, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, there's a tunnel found under Giza, uh, the the biggest pyramid, heading towards one of the others, but they couldn't find where it came out on the other end. Right. But it was like it was like a twenty mile longer tunnel. Oh. So That's yeah, I mean. there, we, are, there we, are things that are still being we've found. We've only scratched the surface with this episode because we've only literally just talked about the building and the outside. There's still the inside. We're going to have to do a second episode at some point where we explore the insides. I mean, I want to sort of leave one of the next like out there theories like on the table and not fully discuss it today because we are doing an episode more later on that. But oh, okay. The Atlanteans built yes. the pyramids. Yes, I've heard this as well, because apparently the secrets of Atlantis are in the Sphinx, which I've also heard, which is another thing that's out there. But, I mean, again, we I do want to talk about the Sphinx and Egypt as a whole, yeah. which we will go into more detail into another episode. The Sphinx, I am going to leave out of this because I've got so much to say about it, but it just sort of takes away from the pyramids, I think. Uh, so we're going to keep it solely on that. I just wanted to but, throw that in there because it is one of the, the theories that I came across and I read into a bit. But then we'll, we'll I want to leave that. a lot uh, of that for the Atlantis episode so we can bring uh, it back around later. Is Atlantis in season one or was we saying season two? I uh, was this season, I think. See what I mean, folks? We're, we're, we're so far into this that we've completely forgot our own schedule. No, Atlantis uh, is this season. Atlantis is this season, and it is the very last episode of this season. So, so we'll if you're more there. if if you're listening intently and you've been following us from the start, get ready for it. If you haven't heard it yet, go and listen. <laughs> the like laziest theory I came across, and it just made me giggle when I read it, was they were just built to store grain. They're just big <laughs> silos for grain. Just silos. <laughs> I was like. Who came up with this theory? Somebody was bored and was like, this has oh, got to no. be a theory. They're just big silos. That was a farmer who was like, I know what they were up to. That's just grain storage. <laughs> That's some guy who's um, had some of the good uh, smoky, smoky stuff. Sat there and looked at him and gone, it's probably that guy in the picture at Pizza Hut, you know. Um, just having, just, I know what they were for. <laughs> I know what they were for. Knowing us now, right, we'll find out in about 10, 15 years that that's exactly what they were. And we'll be left to, we'll be left to eat our words. <laughs> As one I didn't get a lot of research on, but I thought was a, a nice little fun idea, was Noah built the pyramids? Okay. Yeah. Pre flood. Anything, anything to back that up? There was... The biblical history of Noah and the time he would have lived puts him around the construction of the pyramids. So he was alive at the time, estimatedly. I mean, they could have been like 100 or 2 years off, but estimated he was <laughs> but around because it was, was built. Just because, you know, Noah could build a giant boat, they thought, you know That's what, what I'm saying. built giant stone pyramids. And, he, and technically, if you go off the Bible, he was the first guy to build a giant boat. But we've got, who was the... I'm sure there was a Greek dude who built a, an insanely giant ship that, like, rivaled Noah's anyway, but years after. Um, we'll get into it at some point. <laughs> and apparently <laughs> it was chill. him who gave the ideas on how to move big pieces of thingy because he was using those same ideas to build the boat. Right. Because it'd be right. like, you know, like, you have a great mind of every cent of every generation and he was the greatest mind around that time so who else would have known how to engineer it yeah hmm. okay i like them you get you i tell you what you've got some interesting ones there anything that stands out to you more than the others or have you got one that you think is now nah, this is the truth this is the real thing i know i'm still like i'm too down with like the factual side like it it it's explainable. We just haven't got to that explanation yet. There was one. All, all the evidence is there. Across. We've just not put it in the right. Yeah, pattern. we're missing puzzle pieces. Is mine. But right. the pyramids foretell the date of the apocalypse. Okay. Because they were str they, they were placed. Well, if you look on a map, they were placed along along the River Nile. But they were not built in order of the River Nile. 
so you don't start at the top uh, at the mouth and then work your way inland they they vary so it's like somebody was completing the structure to sort of send a message of end of days and i just like that because like how many end of days have we technically survived now <laughs> quite a few quite a few i mean we was waiting for an asteroid to hit us we were waiting for 2012 asteroid and, I mean, 2012 we're still uh, here, Y2K. We're, yeah, we're all <laughs> still here. Yeah. Still living right. our miserable lives, trying to get on with our day to day. <laughs> living in a cost of living crisis, in a world that's just gone topsy turvy. That's why me and Omer are here to keep you sane. <laughs> oh, you like. Not one of the pyramid building theories or anything, right? It came across okay. my desk. I have to throw it in here. Because it was the best thing I ever heard that we missed out on. Go on. Pyramid power. Right, so this is also to do with the theory of that Nikola Tesla had. Mm-hmm. Um, that they could harness the Earth's ether energy. Uh, using the pyramids. D- using the pyramids and basically transform it into energy. Um, oh no no no! What... Pyramid power like branched off because you got to imagine this was I think it was like the nineteen seventies. It sort of hit a big, a big revival. Mm-hmm. So Nikola Tesla had the idea. Everyone else is trying it. Through the years, everyone does something strange. Like one dude built a to scale pyramid and put some meat in it to see if it'd go rotten. Like you know, see if it did yeah. that. And then in the 19... I'm sure it was the 1970s. I might be getting the year wrong. I'm just double-checking my notes. They were all off a tits back then, so it probably was. 60s, 70s. Where was it? Where was it? it? I'm saying 1970s so confidently. Yeah, it was the 1970s. The golden age of pyramid pyramid power. (laughs) And you genuinely had a pyramid that could sharpen a knife. You just put it in, and it would sharpen the knife. Somebody put together some cardboard box and pyramids could cook your dinner, purify tap water, strengthen your TV signal. Everything. It's like marketing went insane. It's, you know, like when you get, it's like when they discover drugs and they're like, this drug can cure everything. And that's oh, what yeah. it was. It was like the best thing. And I don't like if only that had caught on and then we'd all have pyramids in our house right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'd be asking like how the pyramids. pyramids were built you'd be like yeah it was built in a factory down the road it was built in china <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there was a whole era like around the 1970s where like pyramid stuff was being sold to do everything oh reduce the bitterness of coffee just to put it in line with the with us <laughs> You, you, you leave my coffee. coffee out of this. You leave my coffee out of this. My coffee is good. Imagine your coffee could be that bit sweeter if you just put it in a pyramid. <laughs> we have pyramid-shaped tea bags. <laughs> we do? Oh, my God. Mind blown. What the hell? Oh, my God. You've opened up a revelation. <laughs> Jesus. That's... Oh, damn. Yeah, we've got pyramid tea bags. Oh man, yeah, because it was meant to infuse. I remember the adverts. It was meant yeah, the, to infuse. Yeah, the leaves the were meant butter. to be more free and. Oh wow! Wow, well, almost blown my mind this week. <laughs> How about you guys? Um... I didn't expect it. It was just a fun tangent that has nothing to do with the building of the pyramids, but was an interesting pyramid fact. <laughs> well. My sort of looking onto things was, as I've said, the aliens coming down and literally them being built as a, a homing signal or a way to store energy into them, much like you said before, sort of store their energy so that they had a way of communicating uh, back and forth from planets and things like that. That is one theory. And a great way of looking at that as well um, is... Like Stargate and stuff like that, you know, you see it on that. You know, they found them within the pyramids and all that. And I mean, I, that that's just the Hollywood side of things. You know, we we have this fascination of the unknown, and we we want to know what it is. We we, we want the information. So obviously, Hollywood's going to latch onto that and use it. That was one theory. Another one is the Asian astronauts theory. 
again, people from uh, a precursor time have shown us how to build these build these pyramids, and it's not only that; it's the tools that we use to build them. They had them, like they did move them with, and it's and I know we joked about it before, but moving them with sound, literally using vibration to lift the boulders up and put them into place. I mean, that was one theory that I heard, and that was uh, well. Oh, you could do that with a march, range. couldn't you? Hmm. It was in my research for thingy. Is that for the Ark of the Covenant with the walls of Jericho? Yeah, the walls of Jericho. They took them down by the vibrational sound of marching around them. And that's how they got... There was a theory of how they got weakened and fell because of the go. marching and the drumming. And you could, yeah, you could use uh, that to move the blocks. See, are you starting to see the pattern in our episodes, Omar? They're not just chosen by <laughs> mistake. You know, they, they roll on. They roll on. We sort of chuck a couple of episodes in between to sort of rebust it and fill it out a little bit, like Jack the Ripper the other week. You know, next week's episode is a good one as well, so I'm not going to say what it is. If you're listening, you have to wait. Um, but, I mean, that was one of the theories that they use sound to sort of put them in place and build it. That one I kind of like. But the one that has stood out to me, and I know it's it's a pseudoscience and a lot of people sort of discredit it and sort of shy away from pseudoscience because it can't be proven or some people don't want to sort of stake their reputation on it. I have no reputation. I'm not a scientist. I'm putting it out there. I don't care. There was an advanced civilization before us. And I know this very much sounds like, especially to me and you, mate, uh, Assassin's Creed-like, that there was... The 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 t- people before people the people yeah, that sort of I mean it made has us. a strong root in all sci-fi because you've got exactly. like aliens time machine like all of them talk like talk about the idea of civilization growing to the point where it can't grow any force collapses and then you got simpler people who don't know the technologies of before and then we've gone yeah yeah but I think and it's I, again a lot of people have said this it's been proven that. Um, they've taken samples that there was another sort of calamity that's sort of after the last ice age we sort of peaked but then all the weather and sort of the everything about the world sort of dropped again drastically so there was no sunlight there was we were covered in darkness and people are saying that we were impacted by another lot of asteroids after the last ice age. Um, but because it was never documented and it's never been registered anywhere, that that information has been lost basically to time. And you know, the only way we can see it is by certain spots where we've been able to see the, the change in um, the sediment and things like that. And sort of taking earth samples and looking at the rock foundations and the withering of everything. The way that we sort of look today, uh, uh, sort of predating things, but could it have been that our time has been a little bit skewed a little bit in the way that we're thinking, and could a an advanced civilization have built these pyramids? We don't know for what reason. Again, they were using pictures to sort of describe everything. Now, put this into your thought. Now, when we've sent things off into space, you know, like um, on sort of like probes we've sent off we've always sent like pictures i'm sorry but if i was an alien and you sent me a picture of a dog i have no idea what a dog is you're showing me a picture of a dog it's got its tongue out teeth are showing i don't know what this is is it something that's going to attack me what is it the the egyptians I mean, can't say ha- i can't even have teeth yeah. Exactly. I can't say hieroglyphs. My, my mouth can't say it properly. Hieroglyphs. Uh, there you go. And from them, that like you said, like you joked about before, is that they were the emoji to people. You know, they showed us with emojis. And I mean, that is the case. They they taught us how to do things by pictures. And it's all well and good us saying, oh yeah, we we can read them, but can we? <laughs> we're only guessing we know what they mean. You know, that's not exactly what they meant. We don't know what their ancient dialect was or, you know, slang for... A picture of an owl could have been slang for having a dump. You don't know. You know, we've just... Eggplant emoji. Yeah, exactly. We don't know. Is this a vegetable or a sexual act? (laughs) Exactly. 
Exactly. And I mean, that's the thing. We don't know for sure. I mean, we, we have to take it off what we've been told by people that have explored these places, archaeologists, and obviously now it's so well guarded and packed up through all the government looking after it and making sure that no one can go into certain rooms and certain chambers can't be excavated anymore and all this. And it's like, why? I mean, you got to think the majority of that restriction is due to the vandalism of... Yeah, we all are of trying it. to sort of make sure that these things are still here in the next 10, 15,000 years. You know, we they, we at least have something still standing by the end of it. Um, what does get me, this is really funny, is it's, it's a little funny story. It's a little bit off from where we're up to. When all the, uh, the limestone came off, before that, a team of archaeologists actually went and explored into uh, the pyramids when some of the, the limestone was still there. And what they did is they had to make their own sort of entrance and tunnel their way through. When the limestone come off, the entrance was just a few feet away. <laughs> so <laughs> they've made this door here, and just a few feet away is the actual entrance. <laughs> so it was very well built that they couldn't find the entrance. <laughs> I just got the Kool-Aid man in my head. <laughs> it was like bash through the wall, and the door's right there. <laughs> Um, part of me does want to believe that it was sort of an ancient civilization that have but, you know, had technology far beyond ours, understanding far beyond anything we knew. And unfortunately, all the documentation that they had is gone. It, 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 for all we know, it could be buried in the pyramids in one of the rooms that we haven't got to yet. All the information of this was just a joke or Pharaoh was on. Was he? You know, that's all it's going to say. was he? <laughs> you know, that's just all. some stupid like that. And it's just a practical joke all along. But there, there has to be some sort of significance to them. Yes, I know we were built to sort of house pharaohs and they were built for all that. But we still don't have full, clear, precise evidence as to what they were for, why they were built, how they were built. And I think, like I say, that, that, that sceptical side of me over everything does believe that it was thousands and thousands of hours of painstaking work to build these pyramids oh not over a 20 year period i think it was a hell of a lot longer than that and i do believe that these people put their lives on the line to build them for some reason because a pharaoh told them to or whether they wanted a monument to last i mean you have a job for a fair well semi-fair wage <laughs> And that's that's what I think they built them for for the wage. It's like it's a job. It's a job. At the end yeah, of the day, it was it's a job. job. Somebody's paying you. You need work. You do it. Part of me as well does want especially to think when that. you're a contractor. Yeah. Yeah. Part of me as well is thinking I want it to be an ancient civilization that maybe when we do explore the tombs more and we do get down to the answers, it unlocks something, and history is completely changed and our understanding of how this crazy rock in the middle of space works because at the end of the day we're, we're there's so much that is so interesting about our planet and not only just the planet itself but the man-made features of this planet that we know nothing about looking at the the you know easter island you know the 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 big carvings on there look at stonehenge Look at Gebekli Tepe, which is coming up later this season. Look at the pyramids. Look at us looking for Atlantis. Look at the stories of the Loch Ness Monster. Look at Bigfoot, the Yetis, the Mothman. All these things are so interesting. And sort of, it must have come from something and not just somebody's random imagination that have spurred these stories on for so long. And then when you look about it, there's all this interesting information. Yet we're still fighting each other. And it just it baffles my mind that we managed to get all these people together to build these pyramids. Yet now you can't get two people to sit down for a cup of coffee to sort of talk a bit of an altercation through. I mean, obviously, I don't want to go into the political side of it. We're not going to. We're not all about that. Same way. No. Wars have been wars have been fought for many years, and I mean, this planet is just so fascinating. There are so many interesting things here that. 
I don't want to fight anybody for him. I want to share knowledge. I want to understand this rock that we live on together, you know, in peace and actually... You know what? I think if everybody got together and actually sat down, we'd actually find why they were built or why Stonehenge uh, is there. That, that's the beauty of not doing that. The mystery is more intriguing than the facts. <laughs> this is the, Out of the episodes we've done so far, this one has been my least favourite to research because there's more facts around this one. Whereas the other ones, there was more mystery, there was more intrigue, yeah. more more avenues that would make it interesting for me to research. Whereas this yeah. one had some like fantastic stuff come out of it, but the research had a lot of facts that sort of There's more facts of than sort of... Yeah. yeah. And it's um, like finding that, that... It's like a Rubik's Cube. Let's say you've got one corner that's out and you've never <laughs> done a Rubik's Cube. You're going to sit there for hours trying to figure out how to fix it instead of just letting it go and let it just be like, oh, that's one thing that I've never done. I mean, if you yeah. know how to do a Rubik's Cube, sure, you can do it. But if you're like me and have never been able to do one... <laughs> I can't do me for me. I'm colorblind, so I mean... <laughs> I mean, like, getting that piece right is just causing more of a mess than actually fixing it when I do it. So it's like, but you want to see it complete. There's that human need to see things complete. And that's where this has the gaps in it that keeps making it interesting for everyone because we want to see the complete answer. But like, I, I, once you have it, it's not as interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love to know. I want to know the real truth. I want to know why they were built, who built them, and for what purpose. That is definitely up there with one of them. I mean, I'd, personally, I'd love to see them for real. I've never been. Never been to the Pyramids of Giza. And it is definitely on my bucket list to actually go stand and look at them and go, ah, lovely bunch of rocks, that. And then go home. Go and enjoy some pizza at Pizza Hut and look out the window and look at it. You know. Yeah, what about you? Uh, Would you ever want to visit them? I definitely w will. Definitely will. When, I don't know. But I definitely will. <laughs> um, Tune in when me and Omer have got some money and we're going to go and we'll film directly at the pyramids. <laughs> now I'm just going to go to that Pizza Hut. I'm not yeah. actually going to go to the pyramid. I'm going to go to that Pizza Hut and look out the window at them. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I'm down for that. Yeah, no, I, I I like like huge comic book fans. So like, if you bring in like the gods into it, it's fun. And then when I read about the Atlanteans, I I just want that one as impossible as it is to be true. But I want them to be the half fish people. <laughs> like somehow half fish people built the pyramids, and they're like, you bipedal fools, you couldn't do anything by yourself. Tune into our season finale. <laughs> When we talk all Atlantis, where all men can get this theory out in full force. Um, but I think for that, what we are going to say is, again, we're leaving you with no answers, with more questions. Have you enjoyed this week's episode? Make sure you do like, comment and subscribe wherever you listen to our podcast. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, or you can just click the link in the description to the show which is our link tree, we'll give you all the links for everything we have. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm out of coffee. Have we given you answers? Have we left you with more questions than you came in with? You can let us know on all our socials. Links are in the description. But be sure to leave us a great review to please the overlords. You can find all our episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you tune in next week when we have a fresh pot of coffee, some more crazy theories. But for now, I've been Glenn. And I've been Omer. See you next time on Caffeinated Conspiracies.